the world being what it is, there are so many nutty things happening at the moment. You know, you've got the US election still, you know, undecided. I have no idea how they put that together. It's so confusing trying to follow that and understand why the person that just doesn't get the most votes wins electoral college, um, states not being like, I heard, you know, do you remember in the beginning of the election or before the election actually happened, Trump was complaining about, you know, mail-in ballots, right? And I didn't really read through it. I'm not sure if he was complaining because he was afraid that most of the people that mail in are Democrats or because he was afraid of the, that being rigged, right? Because I guess if you go to vote in person like anywhere else in the world, especially in a Democrat society, you just turn up, show your ID or, you know, whatever you registered with and then you're able to sign in and sign in. But it's a bit more easier to kind of regulate. Um, of course, there is still aspects of fraud there, I'm sure, but, you know, it's probably a lot harder to fraud a actual polling station physical one than it is to mail in so maybe that's why he was complaining but regardless he was complaining from you know ages ago like let's say six or eight months ago and if these guys in the media especially the media or especially if in the democratic party because they wanted to win if they hate this guy so much they shouldn't have given him any excuse to complain and they should have just made sure that the ballots things or the mail-in ballots was just dealt with in it in the beginning or on the on the other side of things maybe the republicans should have went out of their way to make sure that mail-in balance couldn't be fucked with or just put as much attention as it, to be honest they did try didn't they yeah they did they were complaining a lot to be fair about the mail-in balance from ages ago and it seems like they have a reason to complain because it does look dodgy even though you know the ex the explanation you're getting now at the moment is like oh actually biden was um even though he was behind in the states that he's now heading those states were uh, what you call it primarily going to vote for Biden because the majority of people who voted voted mail-in and for some reason only Democrats know how to use envelopes I don't know how true that is but this is what I've read on the internet I think that sounds fishy I sound that I think that sounds dodgy as fuck especially you know why it wouldn't sound dodgy if it didn't it wouldn't sound dodgy off the back of the whole like um Hunter Biden Joe Biden's son story right the, if you're not familiar with it the New York Post um basically published a story supposedly alleging that Hunter Biden dropped off this laptop in a uh, repair shop somewhere he didn't go to pick it up so the owner hacked into it in order to kind of find out whose laptop it was so he can you know do whatever and in the process of that he finds all these incriminating images and emails of Hunter Biden doing uns you know some very uh, questionable things with some ladies of the night or you know allegedly tonight who knows it could be his friends and you know partaking in some substances that you would uh <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily want this to be filmed on camera doing or taking a picture with that story obviously gets put out in new york post a couple of weeks before the election it's a big story and for some reason twitter censors it right and twitter seems to be the main place where news disseminates so i guess that's why it's a big deal um they they block it from being shared because they say it's, it's got misinformation or it's fake news or the story can't be corroborated, whatever nonsense. And it's completely blocked. Like every time you try to upload the image, the, the, the link via Twitter, it kind of com completely blocks it. So Twitter have obviously got like some sort of back end resource that they can use that can just block stories from being shared on the timeline. Um, of course, Strazine effect, the more you block it, people are interested. So that built up a whole set of steam somewhere within that timeline. Twitter then suspends the New York Post for publishing that story you know versus what one of the oldest papers in the in america it's a bit salacious it's a bit tabloidy it's a bit daily mailish but still suspending their account because they decided to do what journalists should do and publish a story that pertain you know pertains to the election somewhat is it irresponsible maybe but let's say if this was donald trump jr and he was caught in a hotel room somewhere or motel room actually not even a hotel it looked like a motel motor rule game up getting up to all sorts of nonsense right they wouldn't have it they would be so pissed off so for them to turn around and suddenly say no 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 you can't see this that's what makes this whole like voting thing mailing ballots seem very fishy again i don't know nothing i'm so 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 um my knowledge base in terms of politics especially even in the uk is flipping you know it's not where it should be really considering that i'm a you know a a citizen of the uk and i kind of uh pride myself on trying to be as informed as i can one of my blind spots is politics i don't know much what about i'm talking about i'm just regurgitating what i read online but from what i can pass and from what i can kind of delineate and kind of read between the lines it does seem more fishy it does seem well, more fishy in in light of that incident that suddenly now you know hunter i'm sorry joe Biden was behind and then suddenly now he's ahead because of these mysterious male male ballots are coming but the only thing i don't understand is why the republicans want the count to be stopped 
Like, if there are these secret stashes of mail-in ballots, it probably is for their best interest to demand they all get counted and then for them to say, hey, we don't mind them all getting counted, but it's impossible. Like, imagine if they say, oh, there's these secret bags of, tr of votes that haven't been counted yet. Let's like, say three black bin bags full, right? It'll be within the Republicans' interest to say, you know what? We don't mind you counting these bags, but if all three bags are blue, then this is obviously a fix, right? Because if there are some leftover ballots, why are they all Democratic vote? Why are they all votes for Joe Biden? There should be some votes in there for Trump just to kind of, you know, uh, make the fix look not so rigged. Or look, Mia, you, you do that, right? You'd kind of make it not, not look that dodgy. But if they're all a clean sweep for him and, you know, they kind of bring upon the blue wave, then it does seem fishy. The only issue is all this complaining, all this whining ain't going to do nothing, in it? They ain't going to change that result. You know, Trump is, and that's the problem as well, I think, governing the way Trump has. You know, I think he's done stuff, I think he's done good stuff, right, in terms of policies and stuff for a certain segment of the population are pretty happy with the stuff that he's enacted whether it's tax breaks or whatever again i'm not too familiar with politics but i'm assuming he has done some good stuff but i just think personally as a guy and this is the issue at hand in general which i mentioned previously in other shows about other individuals about cancer culture cancer culture really in my opinion really affects people especially when they're not liked like when you're not liked anyway by a majority by a small minority of vocal minority of people they will look for any reason to cancel you because they don't like you. So as soon as you make one mistake, they're just going to pounce on it, right? And it's literally impossible to come back. If you're liked, like Joey Diaz was liked, um, like that guy, I keep forgetting his name of who came back. Bloody hell, I forgot his name. It doesn't matter, right? But there's a few people, right, who are liked enough that they can kind of bounce back from the public cancellation. But because Trump is so derided, like even by people that actually voted for him, they sort of just pull up with him because, you know, he's sort of like, um, he just upsets people, isn't it? So I guess some people kind of get some uh, value and some, you know, some, hu some humorous value out of seeing people who are politically opposed to their ideals getting all riled up online and crying and getting into hysterics and fits and shit. But he's such a unlikable guy, isn't it? <laughs> he's such a dick, right? That people are not going to give him any kind of leeway in this sort of like fight for you know for in his sort of like legal fight against these cow speed and against these um mail-in ballots being counted you know incorrectly or you know disproportionately favoring joe biden no one's ever ever gonna be like you know what we're gonna let's be on his side let's hear what he has to say never because he's been you know a pretty divisive president if that maybe it's not his fault too i don't know because he when he came into it like they, he was never given like as the, the dave Chappelle comedy sketch in it he was never really given a chance in it to even be anyway somewhat you know uh, can, could he, i don't think he could could he he was never really given a chance to be that you know to be a, america's president but then again could i really picture donald trump reaching across the aisle as they say in america and sort of like you know bringing people to the table and you know having doing some compromises agreeing to disagreeing i don't think he could do it man. i just don't think so especially if you believe what you read about you know him not really wanting to run and sort of like running only off the back of that um presidential roast thing that will happen when he was like sat in the middle of a crowd and you know, Obama was just roasting him on the stage, telling him how he could never be president, just mocking him. And I think since then, he just had a bean in his bonnet about, you know, proving everybody wrong. And he did, basically. And he kind of was able to put a big middle finger up at the establishment, especially the media, the the media, right? Yeah, the, the left-leaning media who sort of always kind of took the piss out of him um, and the people that liked him as well. So he was, that's the thing, it's all the odd thing about Trump because he's so simple and the way he talks and stuff that somehow he's been he's become like the martyr not the martyr he's become like the symbol and the sort of like leader for middle america in it the people who think that they're not being fairly represented in hollywood and media in general right you know every time you see an a, you, know, you know somebody with a country accent on american television they always cast them as like the dummy in it as like the you know the yeah uh, it's just a bit slow you know they only provide like comedic value just from the way they say words they never like the you know they never like the what's the thing called the lead detective in some really detailed police drama thing in it they're always like the you know the muscle or the you know the crafty crook on the side they get treated pretty poorly in it pretty as poorly as blacks and and latinos do in in america man it's pretty pretty rough 
but it's odd as well again you know the, the, the media kind of built him up to be one thing and overall it hasn't necessarily built meant he's he hasn't really turned into that guy it doesn't feel like it but regardless anyway it looks like Joe Biden might is going to probably win he's up to about last time I checked it was about 253 electoral votes I think and Trump was on like 218 you need 270 to win you know it's pretty impossible for Trump to kind of make up that space in in this race so Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States I'm assuming and if that's true because I, I my guess at the beginning was that it was going to be Trump just because it's 2020 and there's just been too many 2020 things that have happened um, that I couldn't see it going any other way. It just had to be this way, innit? Like all the, from COVID to the deaths of celebrities and stuff. It's just been a wild, crazy year, innit? Natural disasters. It just seemed like a perfect way to end 2020 would be for Trump to win a second term by a landslide. I don't know why I felt that, but it didn't happen that way. I'm assuming the establishment just had enough of him and just wanted to get Trump out of the White House and didn't matter if they, you know, put in place a pretty uh mentally compromised um you know old age pensioner in joe biden they're both old age pensioners don't get me wrong but you know they didn't they didn't care it's like imagine the democrats are so desperate to get trump out of the white house they hated him so much that they were willing to you know uh they were willing to sort of fix the democratic election so that bernie sanders didn't win right so they could push their guy forward in what you call it what's his face in joe biden and i guess at the time it was kamala harris and it was like god almighty man pretty weird isn't it pretty weird but hey maybe it's for the best that that he that he does lose i think if you if trump would have won it would have been just absolutely world war three in america isn't it? it's already bad as it is now imagine if he would have won like the left would have just been insane He's got the left to deal with and Tifa to deal with. Whereas I think if if it was if it's the other way around in Joe Biden, you only have to deal with the you know the essentially the conservatives. Sorry, the Republicans. You don't have to deal with anybody else. And maybe some so maybe some proud boys. But that's about it. Um, for the most part, innit? I'd assume you don't really have to deal with anybody else. But oh, it's still going to be a sticky a sticky year for everybody. I think involved. So again, if you're in the states and you are. Still waiting for your president to be elected. You know, thoughts and feelings go out to you guys. Um, hopefully, either way, regardless of what way it ends up, hopefully your country is able to sort of heal itself and mend a little bit, and the divisions are hopefully can be mended somewhat. Because it's sad to see from the outside looking in, right? To see a country so divided. And when you think of America, you think of like Star Spangled Banner, kids in classrooms singing the national anthem. Now that looks like now that image of kids singing the national anthem in the school classroom looks like something out of the third reich in it right which is it's bizarre because most of those early 90s teen boppy movies were like always featured that bit in it that kind of bit where kids were singing the national anthem in schools so, you know what that big of a deal there'd be a, a, an american flag in the classroom and shit now I, I guess some kids would be campaigning for that stuff to get pulled down it's a really sad state of affairs but hey hopefully things change you can only hope for the best going forward again maybe this is a good sign that 2020 is going to end with a somewhat um good bang and not about kind of, not a loud kind of bang we can only hope we can only hope